Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JRD Traders Tea Time with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 1st of May 2020. So yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's um, afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in, as always, uh, let's quickly have a uh, mentioning um, of our YouTube channel. So yep, uh, basically just a quick mentioning of our YouTube channel uh, in order for you to kind of subscribe if you wish to, uh, where you can kind of find a lot of different videos that we do here um, on a daily basis. So yep, I believe you can find something useful. Uh, and another, another useful resource for you could be our website, jfdbank.com. And if you click on the research tab right there, uh, it will take you to this page, which we also update on a daily basis. And uh, yep, we throw out different various analysis. Mm, so which you, I believe you can find useful. So um, now then let's quickly update this figure here. This is from this morning. Um, so let's see what's happening here right now. So let me just quickly refresh the page. Um, so of course, obvious, for obvious reasons, I mean, the number has risen. So yep, but it's still okay. So, um, so yeah, uh, the numbers continue to rise, unfortunately, but it is it is how it is. Um, I hope just you guys are staying safe and protecting yourself. So just to kind of uh, try to take all the necessary uh, precautions uh, in order to kind of keep your immune system running. Um, now then, jumping into a few charts here. Now the first one I want to touch on here is the S and P 500. Now. Um, here and the um, the situation is uh, quite difficult, I would say. So basically, um, yesterday I talked about this one, and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this potential move lower here, uh, where we could see a bit of a correction. Because given that we've already managed to reach uh, one of our uh, main targets, the 200 EMA here on the on the daily chart, uh, the index started drifting lower, and as you can see, yesterday it closed slightly in the red. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, today, um, the cash index right now, for example, is balancing at around 2,848 zone. So basically, it's going to be below this support area, which I talked about previously. The support area is around the 2,880 zone. And uh, in a way, now we can see that the uh, the index is back below this level. So this, of course, is not looking good here for the for the index for the S&P 500 as it increases the chances of a potential drift lower here maybe towards even the uh, this key area of support around the 2729 zone so again for now we'll remain very careful because don't get me wrong it may drift a little bit lower find some support somewhere around the 21 day EMA here on uh, shown as the yellow line and then rebound and push higher again so we've seen such scenarios happening uh, a lot of times uh, that's why for now Yes, we will probably lean a little bit more to the downside. However, we'll, as I said, we will be very, very careful as this uh, could get a hold up somewhere around here, basically. So initially, of course, and uh, then we'll take it from there. Um, that's, of course, in the scenario if the price continues to balance below the uh, below or should I say flow uh, move below the one uh, 2880 zone, because if it climbs back above it, then, well, I mean, w uh, the upside could be back on the table. Uh, for now, uh, looking at the cash index, like I said, the price is currently balancing just uh, a bit below the 2880 zone at around 2848 um, 
jumping into Brent Oil, so a quick update here as well. So not much has changed, to be honest. I mean, the uh, the price still kind of continues to move around here. Basically, it's struggling to overcome this barrier, the uh, marked by the lows of the 15th and, and 16th of April near the 27.18 zone. It's struggling to push above it, and this, at the same time, it's it's finding it hard to move below the 21-day EMA. So basically, it's in a way, it's stuck here. And to be honest, um, it looks like we could end the day like this unless something drastic happens uh, during the US session uh, or closer to its end. Uh, but again, looking at this activity here, I mean, in a way it could stay somewhere around here and uh, then we'll kind of wait for the next week to make a, a better move here. So again, for now, <clears throat> probably we'll stay a little bit more on the neutral side even though overall, yes, the with the the commodity is still trading below its downside line here, taken from the high of the 8th of January. So in a way, if we we could uh, we could see a bit of a push higher here. Still, the overall out, kind of outlook is still to the downside because this move higher could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. So that's why um, we will be very careful here. Um, and if we do see uh, a push higher above this 27.18 zone, then yep, this is when we will uh, consider uh, the upside, a little bit to the upside here. Uh, gold. Gold is flirting nicely with this 1680 territory. I talked about this one this morning and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on it because in a way, um, if we get a daily close below this, then yep, this would confirm uh, a break of a neckline. I mean, well, the neckline is already broken, but uh, just for that extra confirmation, we would like to see a daily close below this because then uh, it kind of could increase the chances of a potential drift further south. Uh, for now, you can see that the... Mm, uh, the commodity uh, is kind of, like I said, flirting with this neckline. So let's see if, if it if it gets a, a further push lower um, and stays and close the daily candle uh, below this area, below this neckline, so that it would confirm nicely the um, the the double top pattern. So uh, which, of course, uh, is a bit of a bearish one. So uh, we could see this one then drifting further south here, maybe next week, uh, maybe all the way here towards this upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of May so of 2019 of course um, Bitcoin cash now this one is quite interesting because I haven't looked at this one this one for quite a while and let me just probably uh, start this one from scratch um, so uh, unlike all other cryptos like Bitcoin or or ethereum or ripple Litecoin a uh, this one is a little bit on uh, is lagging. I mean, it did push higher. However, it failed to push above this uh, the highest point of April. So, if let's say Bitcoin and uh, Ripple and uh, um, and Ethereum, all of them are managed to kind of overcome their uh, previous highs uh, of uh, previous highs of April. Or should I say the, the highs of the beginning of April? Let's put it this way. Um, Bitcoin Cash is struggling with that, and it, it drifted higher, found resistance near the 200 EMA here on the daily chart, and then, as you can see, kind of yesterday it sold off. Um, so today we are seeing a bit of a lift off, uh, but uh, it's it's struggling with this 100 EMA here. So in a way, it seems that not all is good here on on the bull side. So. Uh, because in order for us to get comfortable with with higher levels now, we would we need to see a nice, good, strong push above the um, the high of April here, which is the uh, which is which which was reached on 8th of April around the 280.50 territory. So uh, if we get a nice push above this, then yes, we will aim for higher levels. But as you can see, yesterday the crypto failed to create a new high for April and kind of declined. So again, this kind of makes us worry a little bit. Um, However, uh, for us to, let's say, get comfortable with lower levels, we would like to see a drop below this territory here, below the 204 zone. So uh, as you can see, it acted as a good area of support here, uh, starting from the 30th of March. Um, it also is the lowest point of April. So in a way, what we can see here is a nice little range here on, on Bitcoin Cash. So uh, in a way, in other words, we would need to see this one uh, getting out of this range first before we could consider uh, the uh, the next kind of
a directional uh, move, or at least a short-term directional move. So that's why, guys, for now, be very careful, be very cautious, and let's keep an eye on these two levels, uh, USDJPY. So uh, this one I talked about this morning, and uh, basically here the situation is difficult a little bit, and uh, what I was saying that, yes, yesterday we had a nice push higher, uh, we had a nice push back inside this little range here that the pair was trading in. Um, but uh, as you can see today, it's kind of failing to move higher and the and the rate is drifting back below this uh, lower side of the previous range, um, which is around the 106.92 zone. So if we will, I do understand it kind of got violated, but um, we'll keep this level until probably next week. Uh, then I will adjust this, probably I'll take, I'll grab this level, but we want to see how it's going to end this week. If it's going to stay below this, below this territory, below this 106.92, then yes, there is a good chance for this one to drift further south. Now, another interesting uh, thing here on the, especially looking at the four hour chart, uh, when the pair drifted back inside this little range, kind of, and this morning it failed to move higher, uh, in a way it kind of uh, really respected uh, this line right here. So, uh, it is it respected this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 6th of April. So, in a way we can keep an eye on this one as well, just in case. So, um, I'll, I'll keep it for, for next week. We'll see how, kind of, uh, how the pair trades in relation to that line, but for now, we can see that this is kind of getting a nice hold up here. So it did get a hold up today as well. And you can see this is the effect that we're having. It is drifting lower. So in a way, it's indicating that the trend is still a little bit to the downside. Um, in a way for us to get excited about higher levels, as I've mentioned previously, before I've drawn this line, we need to see a push above this barrier here, the 108.08 level, and then we will aim for slightly higher levels. For now, we'll remain a little bit more to the downside. We'll remain a little bit more bearish than bullish. Um, but again, let's see how the pair and where the pair closes this week um, in uh, in relation to this 106.92 zone. So we'll see. Uh, that's the low of the uh, 1st of April. Uh, USD CAD. Now, uh, this one is the opposite. Basically, this one's pushing higher. Um, oil is declining a little bit today. Uh, so, yep, the Canadian dollar is getting weaker. Um, but uh, as I've mentioned previously to you this week, uh, when I was covering USD CAD, um, first of all, the fact that we've managed to respect this lower side here, the lowest point of April, uh, near the 1.3856, and uh, that happened yesterday, and the pair kind of reversed and pushed higher. This morning, we were seeing a break of this downside line, and this is what I talked about uh, when, I was, when I was saying that in order for us to aim for slightly higher levels within this range, then we need to see a break of this downside line. So, of course, that's happening right now, uh, but as you can see, it's getting a hold up near the 21-day EMA. So, the big question here is, can it actually... Uh, push further north. So maybe this is something for next week. We could see this one climbing further further up here, um, especially if today the pair remains above this downside line. So if it stays above this, then we could maybe consider some higher levels uh, within the this wide range uh, next week. Uh, but if it suddenly drops back below this downside line, well, I mean, all eyes are on the lower side of the of this range here near the 1.3856 zone because it drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and yep lower levels could be met so very interesting developments here uh first of all let's keep an eye on the 21 day ema and uh, yep we'll take it from there guys and of course, keep your eyes on the downside line. So um, US dollar against the Russian ruble. Now, this is something that you probably don't look at very often, but it's quite exciting as well to, to examine this one. And let me just jump into a four hour chart. Maybe this one will be a little bit more uh, clear. So first of all, we can see that yesterday, uh, the pair re rebounded from this little territory here, the current, the lowest point of April, uh, around the 72.633 level. So um, the, or actually this is not the lowest point of April, the lowest point of April could be somewhere around, well actually created the low, yesterday the a new low for April, but um, yeah, basically it kind of drifted back up quickly and pushed higher. So we'll take this level f probably uh, as the 
as the good area of support. Uh, the area around the 72.63, um, or in a way you could round it up towards the 60 zone. So um, it's all very close, to be honest. So for now, basically, uh, that's not the main point I wanted to show you. As you can see, it's now trying to climb higher. Um, however, it is currently getting a hold up. Uh, let me just quickly draw this one right here. It's currently getting a hold up near this tentative, uh, or, or should I say not far from this tentative uh, downside line taken from the high of the 18th of March. Uh, so uh, we will keep an eye on this on this line because what we want to see if this pair actually uh, f confirms a nice uh, descending triangle here. So in a way what we could see here is the rate <clears throat> pushing a little bit higher here if it fails to move or just if, if it breaks this but fails to stay above this downside line the pair could then drift back down and basically all this would be confirming a nice uh, descending triangle which means that uh, later on we could potentially see a break here through the to the downside so again uh, for now that's the kind of the idea uh, first of all of course if this if this downside line breaks and the the pair stays above it and it cli starts climbing climbing higher, uh, in order for us to get comfortable with higher levels, we would need to see a push above this barrier here. The the high of the 21st of April, uh, near the 77.64 zone, somewhere around here, and then we could aim for higher levels. Until then, uh, even if it breaks this downside line, still we will remain, uh, let's say, cautiously bullish, because for us to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels, we would need to see a push above this barrier first. So keep your eyes on this one. And what we don't want to see is, of course, uh, the pair traveling higher, failing to move above the 77.64, 64 five zone so roughly around here uh or actually it's even 75 so there we go guys that's the high of the 22nd of april so 77 72 zone there we go so 77 72 if the pair travels a little bit higher fails to move above this or shows a fails to stay above it because we might we may see a bit of a false breakout here and then a drift back down so if it does something like that then well it could confirm a uh, a nice wide range again here so um but again for now we'll keep that idea as the second scenario for now, we'll all eyes are on this poten potential uh, kind of descending triangle pattern. So let's see if it if it works out. Uh, GBP Euro. Uh, so this one here also I'll stay on the four hour chart. Um, you can see that uh, the pair today uh, kind of was very close to this barrier here, this 1.1515 that I talked about previously, but as you can see now it's drifting back down uh, and it made its way all the way here to, to the 200 EMA on the four hour chart. So uh, what I what I talked about previously when I was looking at a daily chart, what I was saying that in a way if it if it stays below this 21 day EMA, then well uh, it could open on the daily chart of course, then could, uh, the path could be open towards this uh, lower side of the range because for now, the pair, as you can see, clearly is in a in a range here from around the beginning of April. So. Uh, we need to see a clear break through one of these highlighted areas before uh, we could consider a further short-term directional move. Uh, GBP and ZD. So uh, here we're having a nice rebound, um, and the, uh, the 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 British pound is kind of on the stronger side against uh, some commodity-linked currencies like the NZD and the Australian dollar. Um, basically, long story short, you can see that it managed to rebound from this upside support line taken from the low of the 30th of July of last year. Um, so it's now pushing higher. Um, previously, when I talked about this one a while ago, I, I was talking about this level here, the uh, 2.10 zone, because in a way, uh, from the more of a medium term perspective, probably that's still the level that we're looking for, because we would like to see a nice good clear push and ideally a daily close above this barrier uh, in order to aim for higher levels. But, but as you can see, we keep kind of getting small little overshoots. Uh, we keep coming close to this area. But then the rate starts uh, shifting back down quickly. Um, however, uh, this upside line continues to support the um, the upside. So uh, for now, probably um, overall, we will probably stay a little bit more on a little bit on the cautiously bullish side because yes, we had a nice rebound from this upside line. But ideally, we would prefer to see a push above this 2.10 zone in uh, in order to aim for higher levels. For now, uh, from the very short term perspective, there is a chance for this one to drift a little bit higher. 
Now, there's a bunch of levels that we could consider um, here as an exponential target, right? like the, for example, 2.0835 zone, which is the high of the 23rd of April, um, and then we'll take it from there. But still, these these two areas remain for us the more important ones. Um, in terms of the downside, previously I talked about this 2.005 uh, territory, uh, but uh, which uh, almost coincides with the 200-day EMA, but now, given that it kind of moved higher here more to the right um we can actually look at this level the low of yesterday near the 2.0280 uh, territory because if that gets broken then well we this is where we could consider uh lower levels we could aim for further declines here uh but again for now guys for now uh it's leaning a little bit more to the upside so let's see if how far can this push north. Euro Aussie quick update here. So uh, finally, it's pushing nicely to above this uh, 1.705 level. So let's see if it stays here. So but uh, in general, guys, I mean, uh, everything's kind of working according to plan. I talked about this one yesterday and uh, the day before yesterday, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line, which if gets if it gets broken, then yes, uh, it could open the path towards higher levels, especially if, if the pair travels above this uh, 1.7007, uh, 05 level. So right now it's exa doing exactly that. Um, so everything's kind of leaning more towards the upside. Uh, if it also pushes above the 21 day EMA here, then this could open the path towards slightly higher levels. Initially, we will target this level here, the high of the 16th of April near the 1.7350, uh, zone, and then we'll take it from there, guys. For now, uh, like I said, it is looking a little bit more positive than negative. So let's see if it can stay above this 1.70 territory. So let's keep an eye on that one. And finally, EURUSD. So this one uh, drifted higher. Uh, so this morning I was talking about this one and I was telling you guys that we may see a bit of a correction here, maybe back down. But if we don't see that correction, this could push... <clears throat> Uh, further north, and especially if we see a break above this, uh, above the high of yesterday near the 1.0973 territory, then yes, we will aim for higher levels. Now, this is what I talked about this morning, um, and uh, basically we got it. We didn't get the correction. We got a, a straightaway push above this, uh, above the high of yesterday. However, as you can see, the rate is getting a hold up near the high of the 14th of April, which is around the 1.0990, and uh, for now it's it seems that it's struggling to move further north so um, we will still remain positive but uh, the main idea still for us is that we are targeting this uh, this level here the 1.1039 which is the high of the 31st of March um, and we'll aim for that especially if we see a push a strong push above this this 1.0990 zone so keep your eyes on this one could be quite interesting uh, for now of course it is very interesting for the bulls especially so let's see if it can travel further north for now like I said we are a little bit more bullish than bearish. So, okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you for watching and listening. And thank you very much for all your views, your, your likes, guys. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I hope you all relax um, and come back fresh on Monday. Uh, so, yep, we'll pick up on some of these instruments, some new ones. And then we'll take it from there, guys. Uh, so uh, I hope, like I said, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, guys. Uh, today, don't overtrade. Um, yeah, today's a, a bit of a, uh, let's say, a calm day, I would say. So don't overtrade. And uh, yeah, save yourselves. <laughs> save yourselves for Monday. So um, anyway, guys, I really appreciate everything. I really appreciate your views and your likes. And I appreciate your time watching this video. Thank you very much and have a nice weekend.